In the last video, we worked on a simple model and then we applied it to the checkout of our shopping cart. And also, we applied it to clearing the data in the cart so that you don't accidentally clear the data. Now in this part, we're working on the profile section. So in the screen I have here, we'll be creating these details on the profile page and then we work on the wish list here in another part. So for this, the first thing we need to create here is a stack navigator for the screens that will be on the profile page. So we'll do this under the navigators directory. Then we'll create another file for profile stack. To give us a head start over here, let's copy the content of the search stack. So we select all the content on this page, copy it and then paste it in the profile stack. And then we change the spot here to profile stack. And also at the top, we change the declaration to profile stack. For the profile stack, we'll first need a profile screen. So under screens, we'll create a new file which we'll call profile. In this, we can create a simple profile component. Return the fragment, and then export as default the profile component. Also in the index file under screens, we import the profile screen and then export it once again. And then back in the profile stack, in addition to the detail screen, we can import the profile. And down here, instead of the search screen, we'll have profile screen. And then the component will be profile. And the title will be profile as well. Once we have this, our initial route name will be the profile screen. So we copy and replace that here. Now to see the output of this, we go to our root tabs. And then we import the profile stack. And then inside the tabs, we go to our profile screen. And then instead of the home component, return the profile stack. Once we do this, we we'll no longer need the home screen, so we can get rid of it finally. And then when we visit the profile tab, we have a blank space, which is to be expected. Now we go back to the profile screen. If we take a look at our target image, we see that on the profile screen, the first thing we have is a text at the top here, displaying account. So for this, we'll make use of our styled text. But before that, we'll need our main container here. So we import our main container from the components directory. And also we bring in our styled text. For styling, we'll bring in the style sheet from React Native. And then in our component, we'll first return the main container. And in this, we'll have the styled text. And the content of this will be account. Now below the profile, we create our style sheets. And the first style will be called container. And we'll have another for the header here. For the container, all we are doing is to set the pattern horizontal to 25. For the header, we'll give it a margin at the top of 5 pixels, margin at the bottom of 15, and also we'll set the color to our ascent color. So meaning we need to bring in our colors. For that, we'll get it from our theme file under config. Over here, we'll set it to our accent color. And then we'll lighten it a bit. Now we apply the container style to the main container. And then we apply the header style to the account. 
Now, in addition to what we've done, we want the text to be bold. So we can just pass in the bold property like so to make the text bold. Now, on our target screen, once we have the account header, we have a series of components displaying the details about the account. So for this, we'll create a new component. We'll create this component under the components directory and then in the text subdirectory. This component will be called profile info. Inside here, we'll create a simple function component for profile info. Then we'll return the fragment. And then export this as the default for the file. Also, inside the index file under components, we we'll import the profile info and then export it once again. With this done, we can go back to the profile page. And then, in addition to the style text here, we'll bring in our profile info. And then below the account, we can use it over here. Now for this component, we expect it to have an icon, a label, and then a value. So for the icon and label, we'll pass it as props. So for the first detail, the icon will be the user icon. And the label will be username. For the value to be displayed, we'll pass it as a children property. What is done, let's go to the profile info and continue implementing it. To get this started, we'll first need the view from React Native. Also, we'll need a style sheet for our styling. And after this, we'll need our style test components. The outermost component that will return will be the view. And for the icon and label part, we'll group it as a section. So wrap this in a view as well. For the icon we'll be using, we'll get it from the ant design icon pack. So import ant design from at expo vector icons. So over here in the view, we'll render our icon. And for this, the name of the icon we we'll use will be coming from the props. So we can restructure icon from here. Then we pass it to the name of the ant design. For the size, we'll set it to 20. And then for the color, we want to set it to one of our colors. So we import our colors from the theme file. The color we'll be using here will be our tertiary color. Now after this will be our label. So for that we use a style text. And then we will pass the label. For this as well, we need to destructure it from the props. And we can see it once we go back to the profile section. Now after the label section, we'll have another style text. And this time around, we'll be displaying the content that was passed as the children property. Over here we can display the children as well. Now let's apply some styling. For the outermost view, we'll pass an array as the style. First of all, we'll apply a container style to it. And secondly, if we happen to receive an external style, we want to pass it to this view. So we'll destructure the style here, and then pass it to the style of the container. It's saying styles does not exist. So let's quickly create the style sheets. And then continue. For the next view, we'll style it with the label style. And then for the text, we'll style it with the label text. For the container, 
We'll first set the flex direction to row to convert it to a row. We'll justify the content to have a space between them. And then we'll align the items to the center. In addition, we'll set the background color to our secondary color. And then we'll give it a pattern horizontal of 15 pixels. And we'll do the same vertically. Now we'll give it a border radius of 15 pixels. Then a margin at the bottom of 15. Now for the label, we'll set the flex direction to row. Then we we'll align the items to the center. And for the label text, we'll set the margin at the left to 10 pixels. And also set the color to our tertiary color. This should complete all we need to do for the profile info. Now back on the profile page, you have to display the remaining data. So at the top, I want to paste an object here and I'll assign it to active user. This contains the details of the user that you saw in our target image over here. And to display the remaining details, we copy the profile info and paste it twice. Now for the data, we can make use of the active user object here. So for the first one, we display active user dot username. For that then we can copy the statement here and paste it here. And also for the last one. The second property is the email. And lastly, the address. For the email, the icon is mail. And the label is email. For the address, the icon is environmental. And the label is address. We need to get rid of the end here to get it to work. Yeah, like so. Now concerning the data that we've used here, we can take it a step further. Usually for the user data that is displayed on the profile page, it will come from a storage like Contest or Redux. Now in this project, we are using Contest a lot more. So let's create a simple Contest that will provide us with this active user data. So over here under Utilities, we have the Contest file. Then we'll create a new Contest for the user. So we'll call this User Contest. And for the initial value, we will set it in the app.js file. So by here, we start by importing the user contest from our contest file under utilities. For the initial value, we'll make use of the use state. So we'll have our active user, and then the set active user. Then we'll have the use state. Now for this active user, because we are not handling a lot of profile stuff in this project, we can go to our profile screen and copy the object we created here and then apply it as the initial value of the active user. Now we can make use of the provider from the user contest, wrapping it around the navigation container. And then we'll set the value, passing the active user and the set active user. Now with this done, back on the profile page, we can import the use contest hook from React. Then we can also import the cart contest. 
and then in the profile component we can destructure the active user from calling the use contest and passing no not the cat contest but user contest so we pass the user contest like so then we can get rid of this active user object now once you go back to the profile page the content should stay the same so meaning we are now fetching the data from the contest now when we look at our target image we see that below the details we have our wish list so let's display this content with some dummy data and we work on updating it in the next part so over here first of all we need the header just like the account so we can copy the text here and paste it below the last profile info and for this we'll change it to wish list now in addition to the wish list we want to add an icon the icon we want to use will come from ant design so we import ant design from at expo vector icons the name of the icon we'll be using will be hat then we give it a size of 17 then for the color we'll give it our accent color and then we'll lighten it a bit now to give us some space between the text and the icon over here we can add our object and then have a blank space in it like so now for the initial values we'll be displaying as the content for our wish list we'll be using the data that we display for our product over here if you followed from the start we have a function which returns the data in a data file under the config directory so this function which is called the get wine data over here this returns all the data that we've declared in the wine data array over here so we'll be using that as our dummy data so back on the profile page at the top we'll have a new variable which we'll call saved products and this will be an array for the initial value we import the get wine data from our data file now we'll call the get wine data and pass an empty object and then we spread the return result into this array to be used as a saved product now for displaying the product on the profile page we'll do something very similar to the search page over here we are displaying the items using a flat list so we can go to the search page which is the same as the products page then we copy the flat list over here and then back on the profile page we paste it just below the wish list here now the first thing we do is replace the data and set it to saved products also we need to import the product card we'll get that from our components all the other properties will stay the same but for the list empty components we implement another one in the next part so we can get rid of it once we've done this we can go back to the profile page it says the flat list is not available yet so we import that from react native then we can try again okay so now the wish list is being displayed then we have all our dummy data over here nicely so up to this point we have the look that we are going for in our targeted screen i'll put a link to what we've done in this part in the description so you can check it out